Is it that time? It's new product time. <coughs> All right. Okay, let's new, um. New, let's new, do this right away. New, new, okay. New, um, speaking new, of Raspberry Pi stuff. This is the Hi-Fi Berry Pi Hat. So um, this is the DAC Plus. It's kind of it's it's a hat that uses I2S. It's digital audio out of your Pi, and you basically just do a little bit of typing to load it up an overlay. I think you or maybe the EEPROM is automatically loaded. Basically, it gives you. Um, uh, very high percent, I think it's 24 bit audio, like 88 kilohertz, whatever, it's like, or whatever, 192 bit, whatever it is, the highest of the highest. It is like one of the nicest uh, DAC. I think it's a burnt brown DAC. You can even see it got split ground. Um, and it gives you RCA output. You can also solder in a, an audio jack. Um, basically, if you want to connect your Pi to um, like a stereo system or like you want to have it like play music or effects, but you just want it to be very high quality. Yeah. Um, this hat is a very convenient way to do so. Okay. Works with the Pi 2, B plus, uh, zero, all, the, all of the Pi's you know and love. Won't work with the um, Raspberry Pi 1 because it has the longer connector. Okay. All, right. all right. Next up, I think we're dubbing this the Goldilocks battery. This is what Phil B calls the Goldilocks battery. So let me... And I, and I assume right. because it's, the battery's just right. It's just right. It's just right. So um, we've had, uh, historically, um, 500 milliamp hour battery. Actually, let me zoom in a little bit. This is a 500 milliamp hour battery. You can see written on here. And this is a 150 milliamp hour battery. And you can see this one's like really cute and small. And it's like, this one is like really big. And it's, it's also a lot thicker. So this one's really small and skinny and square. And Phil B was doing a lot of projects where he's like, well, I want to be able to um, fit it into like a bottle or an enclosure, and I just need something that's a little bit more than 150, because 150 is not that much, but I don't need it as big as the 500. And so, ta-da, the Goldilocks. Um, it's a battery that is the same width as the 150. So you can see it's got the same, same width as the 150. So it can slide into the same enclosure sizes. But it's the length and thickness of the 150. So it's basically like right now, I got 150, 350, and 500. So a nice little, you know, this is twice as much, and this is you know another another um, like two times the size. This is like three times the size of this battery. So now you have something in the middle. Um, I was cool with it. We want to do a couple of projects, and he's like, I really want a battery that's that's twice as much as this. Okay. Can you can and you boost it? any of them to five volts? Yep. You can use our power boost. 500 with um, any of them, and they'll work just fine. They'll, they'll boost up the battery. Yeah. Uh, it won't, you know, you'll you won't last as long because um, you know, when you lose uh, the, the milliamp hour capacity, it'll be halved, approximately. Approximately, but you can absolutely boost them to five volts. Just uh, use a little a power boost or, or similar, or okay. you can use a, a LDO, a low dropout regulator, to get down to 3.3 volts. A lot of our stuff uses 3.3s. That's why we like light polys. So now we have another light poly. Okay, next up. SD card with something on it. It's Jesse Light. Uh, this is uh, an SD card, a four gigabyte SD card with Jesse Light, which is a pared down version of Raspberry and Jesse. If you have a Raspberry Pi um, and you've noticed that Jesse is kind of big, I mean, it's got like Minecraft and like Wolfram and like Mathematica and like, you know, X11 in the door. It's got everything. I mean, it's got like a lot of stuff on it. And so it's about five gigs. And so a lot of people may already have four gig cards kicking around, or maybe even one gig, uh, two gig cards. Uh, the, the version of Jesse Light fits on a, a two gig card or larger. We stuck it on four gig because honestly, two gig and four gig cards cost about the same amount. Yeah. Pick up a copy if you like. Okay. Next up. Really good for headless setups because you don't you, you don't lose all that space to X11. We got keyboards. Oh yeah, this is a nice keyboard. keyboard. Yeah, these are super cool. Um, these are new key, we, we keyboards. We carry the little mini version. Actually, you know what? I think I. What do you want to do? Hold on, hold on. I might have one. Get, we have oh, these, I do. Yeah, we have these keyboards because we have all these like little Linux computers. I know. Right? So can you go to the uh, yeah. front? Yeah. Front, front, oh. front. Okay, fine. Um, so we have no, this no, little. No, that's good. We'll go to what okay. you said. Yeah. So we have this little keyboard, and this is like really like a Palm keyboard. It's got these little like mini keys, and then there's a trackpad here with left and right buttons. But um, this is like really small, and it's not. You can't. You can. You can kind of thumb type, but you can't. It's not like type like finger type. It's really hard to do so. This keyboard, it's not like full full size, but it's like larger size. It's still smallish, 
um, and it's very thin, and it um, it's made by the same company. And so, like, these are really good, and these are really really good. So this uses a wireless protocol. And it uses a USB dongle, which it tucks into here, and so you only need one USB port. So it makes it really good for like a, you know a single board computer like a BeagleBone or Raspberry Pi or whatever, where you only have one USB port because it adds um, keyboard and mouse. And you get a really nice big trackpad, and then you can have buttons by clicking either um, one finger for left or two fingers for right, and it automatically detects that you pressed with two fingers, and it does a right click. And you get like a keyboard, and you get you know the function keys and the number keys, and like basically up, down, left, right. So you get you get kind of everything, which is nice, um, and it's like in a format that you can actually type with. So this is a nice upgrade to this. Um, and it works with pretty much every computer. We used it with a Pi, and it works great. You can use it with other stuff. It comes with a charging cable, and it has a built-in battery, um, which is in here. And it's, it's a really, really well put together little keyboard. I, I like it. OK. So we run along. With trackpad. We now have um, some more LED strips here. And it is Neofixel. So this is just them off, which is not so interesting. That's, yeah, that's on. And this is um, a really good gift. So let's just stick with this one. So this is, um, these are NeoPixel RGBW. So we've had a couple, we've had the bare LEDs. Now we have them in strip. So these are, um, they're just like NeoPixels that you know and love, except instead of having red, green, blue, they have red, green, blue, white. So they actually have a fourth LED in the package. And so you have to make sure your library is updated to support it. Um, we have. The Adafruit NeoPixel library definitely supports RGBW because we you just put W in when you make the object and it will use um, you can select the white channel. Otherwise, it'll look really weird because you don't it'll alternate the pixels because it doesn't know that it's four bit bytes per pixel. But um, you, because it's a true white pixel in it, you get um, really good white light if you want to have a, a, a lighting effect that's white. You can tint the white with color, but it's like it's really good if you want to have white pixels because RGBW never gets you good. Uh, color reproducibility. It's always kind of like a bluish, and you can kind of see that it's made of um, three colors mixed together. The white is um, a much more pure white color. So we have it in 30. And yeah, then do you want to do you want to skip to the um, other animated graphics? That's 144. So this shows it just shows the RGB, and then we have a little white strip going through to show that the white is is very white. And then um, so we have this one. Sorry, that was the 60, and this is the 144. Yeah. So 144, it's like almost completely solid color. Like I can't even tell. There's so many pixels. Um, and they have a white flex PCB, and these are just like you know neo pixels, but um, you get more. They're a little bit more expensive because you know the, the LEDs have more going on. And mm -hmm. then can you um, click on the picture right before this one? Yeah. You want to show the density? Area? Yeah. Can you um, zoom in? To, oh no! Go on. Yeah. Can you zoom into this? Oh yeah. Because I want to show the um, the individual LEDs because it's it's hard to show on the overhead, but this picture is really okay. high quality. Zoom, Woo. enhance. So you can see that um, the the NeoPixels kind of got this little diffuse look to it. Um, well, it's partially because there's a the silicone cover, but it actually is a little bit more diffuse. And then on the bottom, there's that yellow half circle. That's the yellow LED. That um, sorry, the the yellow phosphor for the white LEDs. So you've got the RGB up top, and then separately you have the you know, quarter of the LED is this yellow phosphor. But it mixes very well, so that when you actually display it, it doesn't look like it's a half moon. It actually just looks like it's kind of coming out of the whole thing. Yeah. And then I can show it uh, live as well on the overhead. I've got it All right. displaying. Hold on. So we've got red, and then it switches to green, and then blue, and then white. And it's kind of like a neutral white. It's not really cold, it's not really warm. It's kind of right in the middle there. Um, we didn't want to carry like every single color, so we thought, well, we'll just go with this. But it's a nice white color. You can use it for lighting. Um, you know, it's, it's not a cold white, but it's also not like an incandescent white either. It's kind of like right in the middle. So yeah. there you go. You get RGBW, and it and it works great. Just remember, it uses um, thirty percent more power because it has eighty LED, eighty milliamps per LED max. And you have four diodes, not okay. three. So you uh, watch power. I'm gonna jump to a question since we're here on this right now. What's the difference between this, like, and, and the dot star? Um, NeoPixels are a little bit easier to well. 
they're, uh, there's more code available for NeoPixels. They only use one pin instead of two pin, which means you have to have very precise timing. So some processors can't run NeoPixels, but these days pretty much everybody's figured out a way to get NeoPixels working on it. So, mm. um, so that's good. You only need one pin to do it. And dot stars um, don't exist with this RGBW configuration yet. They only do RGB. So the, the NeoPixel protocol is, is, those are the ones you can get with the RGBW um, full white sub-pixel. Um, other than that, like the NeoPixels uh, have a slightly slower refresh rate. So if you want uh, for, to do light painting like we showed earlier, dot stars are better because they have higher frequency PWM. You don't get as much dithering, although um, these are actually SK brand. They're not so bad. You can you can barely tell that there is uh, the PWM effect. They go. They are a little bit faster than the 400 hertz of the original World Semi NeoPixels. Okay. Wow. Good answer. All right. And then um, next up, the the star of the show besides you tonight is the OLED Featherwing. Yay! It is the code Featherwing. It is a Featherwing. Um, we're we're starting to we're continuing to have more feather accessories. We had the Proto Featherwing last week. This week we have the OLED Featherwing. This adds a slim little OLED to your feather. It works with any of the feathers, the Huzzah, the 32U4, the M0, the Blue Fruit, the Adalog, or all of them. It uses i squared c to display text um, or graphics, 32 by 128 pixels of monochrome LED. It's very high contrast, so it'll work in a lot of different lighting conditions. Uh, it doesn't use a lot of power because um, OLEDs don't have a backlight, which is really nice. Um, they refresh pretty fast. We have a great library that's really well established, like works awesome. And then we had extra space. We put three buttons for like a little menu control system. So we have A, B, C buttons that you can use to activate different you know things on your yeah. feather board. So we're, we're trying to add little add-ons for the feather wings that you can you know, stack on like shields, these these wings stack on top, and so you can do some activity. So I can show this on the yeah, overhead. Yeah, let's go to the overhead. Let's and the I'll, um, I'll, pr I'll, uh, I'll turn that off. I'll like... talk about a question that came up. No, can um, you um, zoom in? Yeah. Um, so right now is it's one of the busiest weeks of the year, and we also, um, so Lady Ada occasionally comes up, um, and I say occasionally isn't like all the time. She comes up with some um, hits, and the feather is a hit, and uh, it's oh yeah, it's super it's popular. We're making more. Yeah, they got they sold out very fast. And the way we do manufacturing here, it's it's we do it the same way, where we don't <laughs> manufacture five thousand or something and ship them all out, um, yeah. which has caught which has caused other people problems. We haven't had a problem because we don't do that. What we do is we make our first run of two hundred and fifty. And small batch artisanal. Small batch artisanal. Yeah. And then we listen to make sure that there, because there's some people who had an issue with the N0 bootloader. I wanted to make sure that got resolved. Turns out it was a simple driver thing. But we don't want to send out thousands of boards that have, might have an issue, especially new designs yeah. are susceptible to, you never know, something could have changed. And so we, um, we don't do a large batches, but the next and the next batch will be larger. So yeah. then we'll come back and stop. Don't worry. We're making, we know them, they're popular. Yeah. I think tomorrow and Friday is, is, is we're going to be manufacturing. So maybe yeah. in a week or two we'll have more. Uh, we're on it. Just uh, sign up. Yeah. Okay. So you want to show this thing? Yeah. So um, I have this stacked on top of a um, Feather Huzzah. So it's an ESP8266 and it's running off of a LiPo. I can run it off of our 350 milliamp hour LiPo just to, just to show that it is Goldilocks quality. Okay. So yeah. plug that in. And then um, the feather wing, you saw our headers on. Oh, sorry. So, yeah. sorry. You um, just so, plug in the feather wing. So that's a huzzah feather. It's a huzzah feather. And you know, I can just show you, you can just graphics. So you can, it comes up with a little splash screen for a little bit. Yeah. And then there's these buttons. They don't do anything because I kind of didn't make them do anything. Um, but there's ABC buttons. And then you can see, like, you know, it's connecting to Adafruit and it's sending out a value. So you can fit. Four lines of text and oh, it looks like about let's see, it's uh, six wow. pixels wide. Wow! So that nine. can send stuff to Adafruit.io. Yeah, absolutely. And then wow. it can also tell you, or you have data come from Adafruit.io. Like it's it's kind of designed to be very easy to integrate. But you can you can use this with any of the feathers. It doesn't work with just this one. Uh, it uses I squared C, and since the I squared C pins um, over here are the same on all the feathers, this works on all yeah. of them. So that's very 
cross-platform. So to instead of, you know, it's designed ahead of time to, to work with all of them. Um, so you can fit like four by, uh, let's see, 128 by, device, by 20, four by 20 characters yeah. of text, and it's fairly low power, and then there's also a reset button if you want to reset the board. Um, so we'll, we'll do projects with this, but people were like, oh, I want a little display, and like, uh, yeah, this is basically the slimmest display you can fit on the little breadboard yeah. like this. My prediction is by the end of 2016, Feather is going to be one of the most common boards for prototypers, makers, engineers, people who um, like this form factor, like all the stuff it can do. Yeah. And also the cost is, it's, yeah. the and price is great. Here's it with the doubler. This is one of the photos. I like the doubler. Yeah, the doubler's fun because it's yeah. like if you don't want to have, like this one yeah, has stacking way. headers on it. So I, you know, I put long uh, headers on it, but this one you don't have to. You just have this kind of prototyping side by side yeah. action, and then you can do the same thing. You like, can have like Bluetooth, you can have Wi-Fi, you can yeah. have like all this and stuff. And we're, we're gonna come out with more feathers. This is just oh, this is um, running the uh, the graphics demo. Although I think I forgot to put delay in it, so it's gonna crash. Yeah. Um, yes. Yeah, watch that timer. Uh, that's exactly how long watch that timer lasts before it crashes. Um, it's fixed in the committed code on GitHub. Um, but yeah, you can do you can do lines and graphics and, and text and all that good stuff. And um, you know, picked over Wi-Fi or whatever. But we'll have more feather wings coming out. Yeah. Um, next up, we have a, a motor driver, and we have a PWM servo driver, and then we have like real-time clock. And phone a feather. Phone a feather is. I'm waiting for those micro SIM card holders to come in. Yeah. There All was right. like a minimum order quantity of five thousand. I'm like, I'm not ready to do five thousand. So I found a place to sell me a thousand yeah. holders, and um, so we're gonna rock that out. But so this is the the uh, feather wing for tonight. It's adorable. Okay. All right. And with that, Lady Ada has new products. Yay. You did it. You did it.